Whether you're just learning Figma for the first time or you've been using it for quite a while, Figma plugins can really speed up your workflow. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my name is Brendan and I'm a product designer here in Los Angeles and I make content around product design, UX, and UI. Over the past few weeks, I've been going through a UI principles series where I've been going through principles like color, white space, contrast, scale, and alignment. If this kind of content can really help you in your development, make sure to subscribe for future content. We're actually going to be covering the final seven UI principles in the upcoming weeks. In this video, we're going to be covering five Figma plugins that can help you apply some of these UI principles a little bit easier. With that said, let's get into the video. When it comes to applying proper spacing, you typically want to use a grid system such as an 8 point grid or a 10 point grid system. And for those of you that don't know, if you're trying to apply an 8 point grid system, you leave spacing between the elements in multiples of 8. And this is a very manual process and as your Figma file grows, it leads to a higher chance of making a mistake. Holding down option is a great way to check spacing in the moment, but you may accidentally bump it or change a screen without remeasuring. With this first Figma plugin around it, it takes the risk of making any of these type of mistakes. In a nutshell, it rounds all properties, including the properties of multiple items, to the nearest multiplier of whatever number that you input. So I'm gonna be going through a quick overview of all of these plugins, but to keep this video succinct, I'm just gonna go over the basics and let you guys run with it. So for this first one, we have three squares, 37 pixels are between the first and the second, and 38 between the second and the third. So what we'll do is we'll highlight all of them and then we're going to go over to our menu panel, select plugins, and then we're going to be looking for round it. As we select round it, it gives us the interface here. What we're going to do is check through the different options. So we have eight pixels that we can space between these three elements, 10 pixels, or we can hit the settings to set our own custom. I'm going to use 10 for this example and I'm going to affect everything that I've selected here. And then you can see that it made the adjustment. We're going to go out of that interface and then you'll see there's 40 pixels now between all three elements. One last note, I would recommend using this tool after you've made all of your design adjustments. That way you can make sure that you've done your spacing at the very last second. One of my favorite design tools that I've used over the years is Webflow, a code-free web design tool that allows designers to bring their design files to life. A great feature about Webflow is they have this Flexbox builder, which allows you to create some really nice creative layouts and some popular design patterns. With auto layout, it brings Flexbox model into Figma, allowing you to space your content out in an organized way. This is best used when you're working on an entire page layout and I would highly recommend it for your next project. So now let's quickly go through an overview of auto layout. What we're gonna do is go back to the menu here, go to plugins, then we're gonna select auto layout. It's gonna ask what frame you wanna affect. So we're gonna select this auto layout frame and then it's gonna pull up the interface and you're gonna see all the options here on the right. Essentially, the direction on this first top side is going to lay them out. So if you push the first option, it's going to lay them out horizontally. If you hit the second option, it's going to lay them out vertically. And then the third option, which though it does look selected, it hasn't been applied. It essentially puts them down in horizontal and vertical rows. And I can show you what that looks like here in a second. Then you're going to have spacing options. This spacing is going to be the spacing between these six different squares. Then you can add padding to the top, right, bottom, and left, which is a nice little feature. And then of course you can do horizontal and vertical alignment. And your last option is you're able to fix or resize width and height. So let's kind of show you what this does. If I do this first option, it's going to lay them out, as I said, horizontally, lay them out vertically, or then put them kind of in order. So then you can affect the spacing by simply just moving it up here and you can see how it spaces it out. So this may not be the greatest example, but this can give you some idea of how to use it and feel free to run with it. Depending on the role or project that you take on, you may or may not have to worry about designing a user interface for multiple screen sizes. I fortunately don't really have to worry about it for my day-to-day -day job very often, but there are definitely times where this plugin has come in handy. If you've never learned about aspect ratio, I will make sure to link these articles on the screen so you can learn more about it. Essentially, the aspect ratio of an image describes the proportional relationship between its width and its height. It is commonly expressed as two numbers separated by a colon, as in 16 by 9. 
And as you design for different screen sizes, you'll want to make sure that the aspect ratio is the same across these screens. All right, so for this overview, we're going to be affecting this image here. What we're going to do is select the image, go over to our menu, and then hit the aspects plugin. We have the ability to resize the width or the height. In this example, we're going to use the height. Then we can change the aspect ratio. So I had mentioned 16 by nine earlier. Let's go ahead and apply that by hitting the apply button. And there you can see the layer has been resized with the green notification. We can also change it to four by three, just to give you another example, hit apply. And now you'll see how that looks. So feel free to use this. Let's go on to the next plugin. A few weeks ago, I talked about a free audit tool that you can check your URL to see if you're in compliance for web accessibility guidelines. I'm gonna insert the card here so you can check that video out. And for the contrast video that I put out recently, I shared some websites that you can use to check contrast. And I also hinted at a Figma plugin that can help you do the same to check for AA and AAA compliance. So meet contrast, a Figma plugin that allows you to select and scan contrast issues on gradients, images, blends, and fills. And this is a great tool to use once you've finished your design because it can scan an entire page. So this overview may be the most straightforward. All we have to do is select the frame that we want to affect. So we're going to select this contrast frame, go over to plugins, hit contrast, and it pops up the interface, letting us know that we have great contrast here. These are all green because we have a contrast ratio of 16.67 to one. We're gonna be looking at the large text as this is fairly large text, of course. And our goal was to meet three to one for the AA ratio or four and a half to one. So we clearly killed it with flying colors. This is a great tool, make sure to use it. Let's go on to the next one. And the last Figma plugin I wanna to recommend today is Color Kit. In the video I did on color, I talked about the importance of using variations of a color within your UI design in order to create a polished and more professional looking design. I learned this from a book that my co-founder gave me called Refactoring UI. There's a chapter in the book that talks about how you need a lot more colors than you think. And this article is basically summarizing the version of that chapter and I would highly recommend reading it. It will be in the links in the description. So for this overview, it's very straightforward. We're going to select the color that we want to create shades for, and we're going to go over to the menu, go to plugins, and then we're going to go to color kit. And it's going to give you two different options, the dark shades and the light shades. So what's nice about it is it tells you the base color here. It gives you the option to change the amount of shades required, and then gives you a kind of like a percentage between 0.1 and 0.9 of how many shades you want to affect. For more, you'll keep it at 0.1. If you want to have less options, go to 0.9. And then you can also do the same for the light shades. But in this case, we're going to have five shades total. Let's go ahead and generate it and see what we have. So as you can see, it generates this nice little shades option and you can begin to apply these right away. All you have to do, of course, is hover over them to see the different shades here and you can begin to apply these to your design. Let's wrap up the video. These five plugins have saved me time and given me peace of mind before handing off my designs to my developers. If you found this video valuable, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for future content. In the comments below, I'd love to hear about some of your favorite plugins, so feel free to share those so others can discover them as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.